Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me for our Pentecost message from St. Stephen's Comedy Bank Church from Edinburgh on this day. We are already in the 10th or 11th week of the lockdown in coronavirus and I hope God uh, was good to you in this past week that you are not feeling the stress and the pressure of these difficult times. So I invite you to join me in worship, uh, listening to the Word of God and then joining me for communion. And uh, you probably would like to prepare some bread and a cup of wine or fruit juice for that purpose. Uh, feel free to stop the video uh, now and get prepared. I already uh, prepared the, the bread and the, and the cup. As you, as you can see, it is it is there for uh, the later time in the service. And you will be most welcome to join me in that celebration of the Lord's Supper. These are the words from the prophet Joel that will lead us into prayer and worship today on this Pentecost when God poured out himself so lavishly in the Holy Spirit into the life of people, transforming their lives and their ministry amazingly. God said through the prophet Joel, hundreds and hundred years earlier on, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth. And everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What a wonderful promise that was fulfilled at Pentecost. So let us pray. Let us come before the, uh, our God who is so gracious and generous to us. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks that we can come to you as people joined by your Holy Spirit. We praise and worship you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness and mercy to your people. In ancient times, you promised by the prophet, the outpouring of your spirit on all people, young and old, male and female, on every nation. Lord, fill us by your Holy Spirit today. Holy Spirit, come into our hearts and lives, into our homes and transform us in our faith, our love and our service, that in everything and everywhere we will be true and faithful witnesses of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us, that through your sacrifice we may gain forgiveness and entry into your eternal kingdom. You came to give us new life, a new birth by Holy Spirit. So Lord, we exalt you, living Saviour, for the gifts of your love. And we pray you continue to reign in us through your Spirit. Continue to guide us, teach us, empower us, and sanctify us for your purposes. Yet, as we ask you, eternal God, forgive us that despite our desire for Holy Spirit in our lives, we so often limit the power and the work of Him. Forgive us that often we quench the Spirit, resisting His power and influence over our lives. So often we are close to the movement of your Spirit, shutting Him out of our thinking and our lives. Be gracious to us, Lord. And in your mercy, send Holy Spirit afresh, as fire, as wind, sweeping through us, purifying us, transforming and anointing us, making us ready for your service and to be a blessing to others around us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Who taught us to say together when we pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let me share with you the story of that first Pentecost, as we find that 
uh, in Luke's account in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the first 12 verses. And this is what Luke writes about the outpouring of Holy Spirit at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Indeed, what does this mean? Amen. Thanks be to God for his written word. We are, as I said earlier on, we are in the 10th or 11th week of the lockdown because of coronavirus. It is long, it has been hard and challenging for many people and many families and especially those who are on their own and in many ways it is a frightening time and uncertain time. Thankfully the easing process has begun but that will take a while. It will be gradual easing in four stages here in Scotland. And so it is not surprising that many people feel they want to break out of this lockdown. I do not advise you to do that and I do not encourage you at all. It is still not safe. But celebrating Pentecost, the outpouring of God's Spirit in these circumstances, sheds a fresh light upon this whole story, what it means to be filled by the Spirit of God. It, so I invite you to explore this together with me. Because I believe that Pentecost is about breaking out of the lockdown. The events that Luke described here in this passage perhaps are familiar to you. And it is about a breaking out. The disciples were in a, in a lockdown, a self-isolation. Uh, Luke does not say that the doors were locked, but there is that sense that they keep together, they are self-contained group, they hold together, they do not mix with the rest of the population. And Pentecost comes, one of the big three events when Jews were invited to come to Jerusalem to worship God. There was Passover, Pentecost, and the Day of Atonement. And Pentecost was a feast of weeks, as they called it, Shavuot. They were celebrating the wheat harvest. And Jerusalem was heaving with people. We don't know how many people came, but the estimates are from the modest 30,000 extra people coming in to 100, 120,000, and some going to the extremes of even a million people. So there were tens and thousands of people around. And in these circumstances, the church is breaking out. And if you think about these disciples sitting in that upper room, only on their own in that lockdown, in that self-isolation. They didn't want to break out. They didn't feel it was safe outside. They did not have in mind to establish the church. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, driven by the Holy Spirit. And it was because of that that they understood scriptures and they understood the signs 
spirit opened up their minds before scriptures and they saw that this is God's doing, fulfilling that ancient promise to Joel that he's pouring out his spirit on all nations. And this is the time to break out. And they acted. They took the opportunity. And I find it quite interesting that the lockdown we have to go through opened an opportunity for us, the church, to break out from our self-isolation. Because before the breakout, churches were very compact units. Pleasant places, like family, but quite compact, almost like a self-isolation. For many people, it was the only place where they lived out their Christian life. It was the only place where they behaved and acted and spoke like Christians. They didn't do it any other place. But now you cannot be a Christian in the church. If you are serious about your faith, you need to be a Christian at home. You need to be a Christian with your neighbors as you are engaging with them, with your friends on the phone or on email or on text or WhatsApp. Many people say that now in this lockdown, connecting with others, with their neighbors, got a new dimension. It is a deeper, it is more meaningful conversations. They are talking and sharing with them, with people they never did before. They get to know them better and they become friends. It wasn't a gradual thing, it was a sudden thing as the lockdown came, instantly. We broke out and we can break out, connect with people. And that's what the disciples did. They connected with people outside, declared the mighty deeds of God, no inhibitions and no fears. When Jesus gave his great commission, go and make disciples of all nations. And before his ascension says the disciples, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Now, this commission is big, is huge and overwhelming to many of us. Usually we have two problems with this. First, to be witnesses. We don't have the courage to do that. And secondly, the scope of it, the ends of the earth, all nations. Many find it extremely overwhelming to talk about Christ, to share their faith with others. How would you feel if I would ask you tomorrow, speak to strangers about Christ? The first thing is, oh, wow, no, not me. I couldn't do that. I don't know the words. I don't know how to do that. That's, that's really not my thing to do. Even just sharing with others about Christ while you have a meal is difficult for so many. That's the first problem, to be witnesses. Many feel it's beyond their scope. And God says here, you can do it. I created the circumstances that you will be able to do that. While you are still in a lockdown and terrified, and find it difficult. I make circumstances that you will engage with people outside, with your neighbors, on a deeper level than ever before. That's what the Holy Spirit did to the disciples. Came and filled them and became their power. They could do all things through him. And it was the power of revival and not of survival. And I think that's so important to remember. The Holy Spirit is a power of revival, not of survival. At the end of this chapter in Acts, Luke says that 3,000 people came to faith. That's a revival. Power, courage, and insight, and skill, and talent was given to people, and these disciples started to use that. Things that they never thought of, they never imagined, or gifts and talents to have or acquire. The Spirit for us is there, enabling us, helping us to learn new things and engage with people. And the second problem is the scope, all nations, the ends of the earth. And God has a great sense of humor, and I think this is just genius what he does. But he is God after all. How can these disciples be witnesses to all nations? Well, God brought all nations to them onto their doorstep. You heard the list as I read it up to you. And that's what lockdown brought to us. 
as churches or Christians. We moved online. We shared the gospel online, on the website, on our social media, on our newsletter, on having Zoom meetings and in these videos. And we are reaching far more people than we reached ever before. Connecting and communicating with them. Holy Spirit releases you from your personal and your spiritual lockdown and isolation. It is the power of God. Luke describes it as the wind. And to us, the wind is a meteorological definition. But to the ancients, whether they were speaking Hebrew or they were speaking Greek or Latin, the word for wind also meant spirit or breath. And this reminds them that this is the breath of God. This is the spirit of God that was hovering over creation. This is the breath of God that gave life to Adam. This is the spirit that gives new life, as Jesus says, to Nicodemus. And the sign that you are filled with the spirit is not tongues, but all those who are filled with the spirit, we find that in the New Testament, nine or ten incidents, they always start to speak about Jesus. Sadly, the majority of Christians and churches make no use of the Holy Spirit, not to the full potential, not for the purpose He came and filled them. They use it only for survival, not for revival. Perhaps you are familiar with that war photograph. I don't know, is it First World War or Second World War? Two German soldiers lighting a cigarette at the flame of a flamethrower. And to me, that's the image of so many churches and Christians. They have the immense power and potential to set ablaze the whole neighborhood, the whole city, the whole world, and they are lighting just a cigarette. They have only little prayers, little expectations. Let us just survive. But the Spirit is not for survival. It is for revival. It is like wind, it is like fire, setting people ablaze. He set ablaze the disciples and he's setting you ablaze that you can set ablaze your neighborhood, your friends, your community with the love and the grace and the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. That when you dream dreams and see visions, you have the power to fulfill them. And that's the big thing. What are you going to do with the Holy Spirit? You see, when Peter was preaching his sermon, on this Pentecost day, when he finished the sermon, that word cut to the heart of people who were listening. And they asked Peter, what shall we do? And that's the question of Pentecost. What will you do with Holy Spirit? Will you continue to light only a cigarette while you have the power, the potential of a flamethrower? Or will you set the world ablaze with the love and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you promised and gave us your Holy Spirit. That with your love, with your grace, with your mercy, we will be able to set this whole world ablaze. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not use Holy Spirit to his full potential, when we ignore him, when we do not recognize that he's not just for survival, no, for revival. So Lord, we want to give you thanks afresh for Holy Spirit and we pray that you will fill us, you empower us, enable us to be your witnesses in this world. Flood our souls, flood our homes, take over our lives and lead us, Lord. And flood our churches and take over our churches, Lord. And lead us in your ways. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. And now, if you have prepared yourself to celebrate communion with us, I will ask you to do so. Maybe this is a time when you go and prepare that bread and that cup. Just stop the video and then continue to watch it as I lead you in communion. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, 
to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Apostle Paul said to the Pentecost crowd that the promise of forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit are for them and for their children and for all who are far off. It is here before us on the Lord's table, the testimony, the symbols of our Lord's body and blood, this bread and this cup that assure us of the love and the mercy of our Heavenly Father and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a valid promise to us as well. For you see, the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread as he celebrated Passover with his disciples, with his friends. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said about that bread, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when it came time to take the cup, he took the cup in the same way, saying, This cup is God's new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I invite you to join me to do the same that Jesus did as we break the bread and share the cup. And as Jesus gave thanks to God and came before him, I invite you to bow your head in prayer now. Lord, we bless you for your king of the universe. Blessed you are ruler of all beings. God, from the beginning, without end. You are Lord of creation, sending your spirit to brood upon the deep and giving to Adam the breath of life. We bless you for your every gift that comes from above, that enriches our lives and testify of your goodness and love for us. We bless you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ, conceived by the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We bless you for his baptism, for the descent of the dove, the anointing of the Spirit for His divine empowering. We bless you for His ministry of mighty works and tender mercies. We praise you for His obedient suffering, His sacrifice on the cross, His glorious resurrection and ascension to heaven. To you we give the eternal praise, Lord. We bless you, Father God, that on the day of Pentecost, together with Christ, you poured out the fire of your spirit on his on his disciples and made them one body that in this last day your spirit is being poured out on all people making us a holy people and the royal priesthood we bless you lord for the bread and the cup the testimony of the love and saving sacrifice of our redeemer by holy spirit may the bread we break the participation in christ's body and the cup a participation in the blood of Christ. For Jesus' sake. Amen. So we share this bread and this wine because Jesus has commanded us to do so. On the night he was betrayed, he took a piece of bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is God's new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. So people of God, I invite you to take the bread and eat it. It is the body of Christ, which is for you. And then take the cup and drink from it. It is the blood of Christ, which was shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do so in memory of him. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray.
Heavenly Father, we give you immortal praise and thanks for granting us your grace and mercy. The blessings and benefits of bringing us into communion with your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and one another as we took the bread and the cup. Lord Jesus, we honor and glorify you for making this possible so freely by sacrificing yourself for us on the cross. We pray that you will grant us grace, that we will never be unmindful of your love and gracious sacrifice. But having it hidden in our hearts, we will grow in faith and in every good work for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our living Savior. Amen. And now may the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, he himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen.